Hello friends, has spent more than 50% of his life sitting down and doesn't plan on stopping here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be covering a newly emerging strategy for the middle lane that I honestly feel doesn't currently have a counter. When I say that I think this strategy will be nerfed, I'm not hyperbolizing for clickbait. I would bet my third ball that this gets patched out pretty soon because it's pretty broken. So with that being said, First, I want to show you a replay of none other than Eternal Envy doing this strategy. Then, after that, we will cover exactly why and how this is possible, followed by another example of somebody else doing this in a pub. So here we have a replay where Eternal Envy does this ridiculous mid creep wave cutting strategy and what makes it even more impressive is of course this is in the uh, BTS Pro League so this is a competitive match. He's playing against Beast Coast who is a TI level team uh, as well as he was first picked this Bristleback. So they were so confident in this strategy that they're like whatever pick counters it doesn't matter this is so good that you can counter it and it's still going to get farm. And the way that he sets up for this is perfect. He does absolutely not play the first uh, you know, two minutes of the game like a traditional mid laner. You can see that his starting items are absolutely ridiculous. Instead of walking through the mid lane to get where he's trying to go, he walks through his jungle, then he walks down this double high ground ramp here through the river where he knows that nobody is going to be scouting him because of course that mid lane is going to be warded up, and he walks into the enemy triangle. As you can see, like I alluded to, he has a ridiculous starting inventory. He's got a ward, which he places on this eye spot here, which is going to give vision of any supports or people rotating to stop him from doing what he's about to do. And in his inventory, he's got two clarities, a salve. Uh, he's saving 90 gold to go for the eventual bottle. You might be wondering, why the hell wouldn't you go for bracers? He doesn't go for any of that. He just wants regen. He has two clarities, super untraditional. And that's because all he needs to do is survive for a couple of levels while he's cutting the wave. And you can see that they even sent a courier up. They don't expect him to be here because why the hell would anybody be here? He didn't walk through any vision. He uh, gets the bounty rune, which of course a lot of the time people are going to let you snipe that because they don't expect anybody to be there. And the thing is, he has no reason to be mid because he's going to cut this very first wave. You can see he pulls it up the hill here so that way he can play around the ward uh, in case Chris Luck comes in and tries to, you know, bully him. He can just run this way. And really, if you're a mid laner, do you want to move away from this creep wave and let the entire creep wave die to the tower just to stop a bristle? No, nobody is going to be able to do that. That's that's not going to happen. You're not going to have a mid laner sacrifice level 2 and have this hero get level 2 in order to do that. So that's why Envy runs up towards the ward. It's a safe place for him to play, and he knows that Chris Luck doesn't want to be there. So he kind of just kills the first wave with the clarity, uh, which, once again, the reason he keeps that distance is so that way the clarity cannot be broken by Chris Luck. He kind of tries on the Lina to uh, walk around and pull the creep wave into the next one behind the tower, but Envy is not having it. He cuts some trees with the Quelling Blade, cuts himself out, pulls it into these trees here. Make sure to right-click it, by the way. you got to turn around and right-click the creep wave, otherwise sometimes it might lose vision. And then he pulls it to this uh, third creep wave, which is going to allow him to clear all of this at the same time with the same mana cost of, you know, typically clearing one single wave. You can see that he doesn't consider himself strong enough yet at level 2 to pull it to a jungle camp. Uh, he just farms it with, you know, just the wave. And the way that he positions, in my opinion, is perfect here. So he sees that Schofield is a top lane player, right? He is playing with this axe, and he runs all the way down here to try to stop Envy from doing this. So instead of walking towards the top lane, which is where Schofield wants to play, he says, you know what, if you're going to commit to... Uh, trying to stop me from doing this, I'm going to make you play as far away from the place that you want to be as possible. So he runs towards the bot lane, doesn't just let Schofield hit him, and because of this, Schofield runs in, takes a little bit too much damage, and ends up feeding. It, it, it really seems like this is very difficult to stop when you have a mid laner who's getting so much XP from this uh, in the early game. And he sends his courier around. Chris Luck kind of tries to go for it. He gets his bottle. This is probably the riskiest thing that happens with his courier. He manages to micro it here. I think probably if you're in a pub, uh, going back to that ramp in the river to get your courier is probably a decent play. He manages to somehow get Chris Luck with the kill there because he's got so many levels. And uh, I mean, realistically, a level four bristleback running around with a bottle it's uh, very difficult to, and God, he orders a pizza. In this moment, he goes to get a pizza from his uh, from his door. 
So they unpause. Uh, I've, I've watched this strategy happen in the offlane as well, and a lot of people will just go back to base if their bottle is empty and they have no mana uh, because you get so much farm so quickly from just cutting waves and dragging it to camps that it doesn't really matter if you have to walk all the way back to Fountain because you just come back into the lane and continue doing this. So it takes a little while, but he does start uh, pulling to this creep camp here. And this is something that I'm seeing a lot more commonly in pubs and probably the more applicable thing from this video because you can't always do this if you don't have a bristleback on your team, but you can pull to this particular camp with a lot of mid laners. And we can see it's very difficult for Beast Coast to contest this. I, I get this question a lot. If you're cutting waves, you know, what do you do when the enemy team contests you? Well, what do you do? You just run away, you just take bounties, you farm. You don't just sit there and let them kill you, of course. Uh, you just make it not worth their time. That's that's basically what you do. So now that he's mid and he's kind of chilling, he grabs the creep wave, grabs the second creep wave. <laughs> More of the same. He almost never clears a creep wave unless there are multiple creep waves at the same time and then Lo and behold, he's got a support that's been stacking for him in the jungle. This isn't going to happen to your pubs. Uh, if you're in one of your pubs, you can probably just continue doing this over and over, which uh, is actually what Envy did in a previous game against Furia Gaming, where uh, he just kept rinse and repeating the strategy, kind of like you see him doing right now, but uh, he was farming a lot more because, of course, his team in that game did not stack for him. But in this game, with the stacks, of course, he's going to go back and farm those. At the end of this video, I will be showing you another example of a far more common mid lane hero doing this strategy, because I know that it can look very specific to Bristleback at first glance, but it's actually not. But first, why is this efficient? Well, that's a pretty simple answer. It just costs way less mana overall to kill two entire creep waves along with a jungle camp with the mana that it would normally cost to kill just one creep wave, that is a 1 for 3 value. But why is this strategy possible? In other words, why in God's name is playing behind not one, but two enemy towers not incredibly dangerous? One, because absolutely nobody on the enemy team truly wants to play directly behind their tier 2 tower in the middle lane. If the enemy mid leaves to try and stop you from doing your creep wave shenanigans, then your creep wave will very quickly destroy their tower. So. Sure, you may take some damage or even die, but that is not going to be worth losing a tier 1 middle tower, which is generally considered to be the most important tier 1 tower in the game, if not one of the most important towers in general. If anybody else from either of the two side lanes comes and tries to stop you from doing this, they'll soon be playing against an overleveled and eventually overpowered hero because you know what there is none of behind the enemy tier 2 tower? Allied creeps. And so, of course, there won't be any way for your opponents to get XP. 2. If you die behind the enemy tier 2, you're going to respawn at roughly the same time that the double creep wave reaches your tower. Now, at this point, your concern might be, what happens if you die and the enemy team pushes your tower with this absolutely monstrous wave that you've built up? That's exactly the reason that you only build up a double wave and not a triple wave, and that's also the glory of doing this in the middle lane. Look how close the tier 1 and tier 2 tower are in the mid lane together, and compare this to the safe lane. The distance between the tier 1 and tier 2 in the safe lane is basically a marathon. And that's not to mention that there are also plenty of high grounds and safe hiding spots in the trees around the middle lane. How in Gaben's name are you going to exert any serious kill or tower taking threat whatsoever in the early game when there is so much safety around the mid lane? So to sum it all up, not only is this an incredibly efficient strategy, it's economically devastating to the enemy team to try to stop you. So either they try to stop you and they lose the game, or they don't try to stop you and they lose the game. How do you beat it? I genuinely don't know. This exact thing was happening in the offlane, and Valve very quickly swung the nerf hammer. So I mentioned before that I would show you a replay of somebody doing this essentially on a more traditional mid laner, and that mid laner is Ember Spirit. So this is a pub game, this is uh, Infamous KXY. I was in this game, and I recall him doing this, and feeling like there was absolutely nothing that we could do to stop him. Uh, he was just getting so farmed if we were to run at him uh, while he was doing this. 
he had too many levels from doing this that it wasn't really worth our time. And uh, like I said, I want to show that you can do this on any hero, not just the bristle. Uh, you can do this on most mid laners. It's just that on heroes that aren't bristle, it's going to be less frequent. But it's still something that's incredibly important to integrate into your repertoire of mid lane tactics because it really does get you so goddamn farmed if we look at net worth. Uh, I'm sure this guy is absolutely killing it. And he is. I mean, his other cores are doing pretty well as well. But uh, So he says Void Spirit's missing. That gives me this opportunity to go behind the tower. I'm not just going to kill this creep wave. I'm not going to siege the tower. I'm going to pull to this camp directly right here and kill both the camp and the mid lane wave at the same time. Now, I got to say, I'm surprised people weren't doing this earlier. This is legitimately... Uh, one of the first times that I've had somebody do this against me in pubs. Uh, I suppose it's possibly because these camps are so new that uh, people really just hadn't tried it yet and hadn't realized how broken it was. But uh, now that it's a thing, it really feels like this is something you should be doing every game. I always tell people in coaching and replay review, uh, once you've killed the enemy mid lane wave, go jungle and that way you can get double the amount of farm. But the extension of that seems to be just grab the wave and drag it to one of their camps, which lets you take their farm away from them, as well as you get to use what would normally kill one wave in terms of spells and mana to kill a wave and also one of their jungle camps. It just seems like one of the absolute most efficient things that you can do. So all I can say is go ruin some pubs while you have the chance, because the window for using this strategy is almost certainly closing.